Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. And also, welcome to another distribution review. I just love checking out new Linux distros as soon as they come out. And Ubuntu Cinnamon, the Ubuntu Cinnamon Remix, as it's also called, is not actually new, but they did put out a new version lately, version 2104. And I've been especially excited to check out this one. Now, some of you out there might be wondering, why do we even need this? We already have Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition. That's also built on Ubuntu. Why do we need the Ubuntu Cinnamon Remix, which is built on Ubuntu and features Cinnamon? Isn't it, well, the same thing? Well, not really. Linux Mint is not an official flavor of Ubuntu. To be fair, the Ubuntu Cinnamon Remix is not an official flavor either, but it wants to be, it's trying to be, and I hope that it does become an official flavor. I think that would be awesome. And you know what? I think Linux Mint needs some competition. If we had an official flavor of Ubuntu that was powered by Cinnamon as the desktop environment, I think that would be great. So I really hope this distribution does become an official flavor. And after checking it out, I have to say, I don't really understand why it's not. So let's go ahead and check out the Ubuntu Cinnamon Remix version 2104. All right. So here on my ThinkPad X1 Extreme, I have a freshly installed and freshly updated Ubuntu Cinnamon Remix 2104. And real quick, I'll talk about the installation. This distro is not currently using the standard Ubuntu installer that most of the flavors use. Perhaps if this becomes an official flavor of Ubuntu, they might actually get access to their installer. The installation process was mostly fine. There was some issues with high DPI. I mean, it didn't really look all that great at first. The fonts were a bit mismatched, but if that was the biggest problem that I ran into, then I guess the installer is totally fine after all. However, when I installed this, I checked the box for encryption. That's usually something that I like to test. And when I set up encryption, the machine would not boot at all. It would just show a busy box message on the screen. And I don't really know why it wouldn't boot when I enabled encryption because all the other distributions that I install on this laptop, and keep in mind, every distribution that I review on this channel, they are all done on this machine. And since it works on those, I don't understand why encryption was a problem on this one. So I repeated the installation again, and that time I did not choose the box to add encryption to the installation, and it booted up just fine. So what you are seeing on the screen right now is the Cinnamon desktop. Now, something that was very strange to me is that when I first installed this, before I installed the updates, which was before I clicked the record button, I actually had two Wi-Fi icons down here on the tray, which was very confusing. I had two completely different network managers running. When I installed the updates and then I rebooted, it seems like that fixed it because now I only have one network manager icon here. But now I have two Bluetooth icons. So... There's definitely some craziness going on here with the icons. I'm not really sure what it is just yet. Maybe it's something they'll fix in an update. And it could be one of those things where if they had access to all the resources that official Ubuntu flavors have access to, and they weren't forced to reinvent the wheel, then we might not have strange things like that happening. But anyway, here we have the Cinnamon desktop. And as I understand it, it's running version 4.8.6. So Cinnamon itself has some new features that I'll get into. But let's explore the Ubuntu Cinnamon Remix desktop. And as with most distributions nowadays, we have Firefox as the default browser. No surprise there. And it's interesting that it's asking me to make it the default because it already should be the default. That's very interesting. So a setting was missed there. And again, I'm not really upset about things like this because I do understand that if the developers of Ubuntu Cinnamon Remix had access to the same tooling that official flavors have access to, then maybe things like this wouldn't be a problem. And it's not a problem for me to just click make default and then it's solved. But I do get the impression that the developers have a bit of an uphill battle here considering it's not an official flavor yet. Come on, Canonical, just make this an official flavor already. Anyway, we all know what Firefox looks like. 
And for the file manager, we have the Nemo file manager, which is actually one of my favorites. I like this one a lot. I'm a big fan of Nautilus on GNOME, Dolphin on Plasma, as well as this one. It gives you all the standard capabilities that you would expect, such as being able to change the way that icons are represented on the screen. We, of course, have a sidebar here. We get a lot of options here, which is great. And we can, of course, change what is displayed here. I actually think I like this one a lot more. And I do like the ability to add favorites. So I can pin my favorite folders and files, which is pretty cool. That can give me quick access to things I use the most often. And we have a computer icon here on the desktop, which kind of brings me back to the Windows days a long time ago. So if that's a workflow that you are used to, when you plug in a flash drive and you click on computer, it'll show it here. That workflow is represented here. And that could be part of the reason why a lot of Windows refugees find a safe haven in Cinnamon. We even have a panel down here at the bottom, similar to Windows. And if I open up an application, so I'll click on the menu here. So randomly, I will choose LibreOffice. And now that we have it running, we have an icon for it down here. So it's in icon only mode by default. And you can see at the bottom, there's a bit of a highlight that'll help you differentiate between applications that are running or not. So we have favorites right here. So I can click on the terminal, for example. And it's actually using GNOME terminal, which is fine. I mean, why should Cinnamon reinvent the wheel and create their own terminal emulator if GNOME terminal works just fine? And it does. And as for other default applications that we have, I've already shown you LibreOffice Writer and Firefox as well. We have Thunderbird for Mail. We have GIMP for image editing, Gthumb, LibreOffice Draw. We even have some games installed by default. How cool is that? So if you want to play a game of chess, well, you can do that. Another thing that I really like about the Cinnamon desktop in general is how much customization you actually have with the entire desktop. Now, you aren't going to have the same number of options that you have with Plasma, for example, but you have basically everything you could ever ask for. So as you just saw, I was able to change the icon layout. I think I actually like horizontal better. I don't know why, but that just seems to make more sense to me. But not only that, we have a lot more options than just the ability to customize how the icons are displayed. In system settings, it'll expose the rest of the settings that we have access to. So for example, themes, I can go ahead and change the theme and we have two themes by default. You can always download more. So if I prefer the light version of the theme, then as you can see, I could change that. So as you can see, we have a few themes here. We could change the icon theme as well. And you can see the icon changed on my home icon. And the icon colors have changed here as well. Now I'm going to change everything back to the default here. But we also have the ability to add and remove themes as well. So it has a little repository of sorts here where it can pull themes from. And I really love this idea. It's a great thing about Cinnamon because even though we don't have very many themes installed by default, we can install whatever themes we want and customize the desktop to make it look the most appealing for us. And speaking of themes, the default theme is something that the developers put a lot of work into. And I think it works very well. I think it looks very professional. It looks modern and it really gets the job done. You could tell that the developers really put a lot of polish into this release. But what about software? How do you get software installed on Ubuntu Cinnamon? Well, first of all, the first thing that I usually recommend most people do 
is check out additional drivers because you might have hardware that could benefit from a proprietary driver. And I hate to use the word benefit and proprietary in the same sentence, but reality is what it is. Your computer came with the hardware that it came with, and you probably want it to function at its best capacity. So sometimes that might require a proprietary driver. So here we have an NVIDIA driver for my ThinkPad Extreme. So I can simply check the box. I can apply the change. And then once I reboot, I should be using the NVIDIA driver. I'm not currently doing anything that would benefit from the NVIDIA driver at the moment, but it's nice to know that if I needed it, it's easy to get. So I'm just going to minimize that. And that's how you can get additional drivers on your system if you need them. For other apps, we have software under administration in the menu here. And this is pretty much the same as you might find in many other flavors of Ubuntu. And software in Ubuntu Cinnamon Remix, this application called software, it's basically the software store. It's essentially the same thing as you get in other flavors of Ubuntu. And it's pretty self-explanatory too. So for example, if I wanted to install Spotify, here's the icon for it. I simply click on it and then I click on the install button. I'll type in my password and it should be that simple. So I'm going to let that install, but you get the idea. You can look through the available apps here in software, choose the one that you want to install, click on it, install it, and it should be that easy. And here we have a list of applications that are already installed on our computer. Now Spotify is in the process of installing right now, but we have a list of apps that are already installed. So if I didn't think that I would be able to pry myself away from chess and I need to get some work done, I can click on the remove button right here. And then we also have an updates tab as well, but I already took care of that off camera. I like to start all of my distribution reviews with the latest versions of everything, just to make sure if the developers patched any last minute bugs, that those bugs don't show up in the video. And Spotify is now installed, which is great. I like the fact that they put that message up there on the screen to let me know, even though I minimized the software application, it's hooked right into notifications, so I don't have to stare at it to see when it's done, it's going to let me know. And another thing that I noticed is this star icon right here. And I absolutely love this because Anytime I mark a folder or a file as a favorite, it's going to show it in this list down here. Now, this is amazing to me because I have a few files that I update pretty much every day. And by adding them as favorites, I can have them available in this list so I have quick access to the things that I care most about. And it's right here in the panel. And I think that's a feature that I can really get used to. Now, another feature that I like about the latest version of Cinnamon is that they have enabled Suspend Then Hibernate by default. Now, that may not sound like a big deal, but to me, it is. I have several laptops, and I will put them on Suspend when I'm not using them. I can get distracted. I'm working on a project on my desktop, and maybe it's a few days until I get back to one of my other laptops, and then the battery is completely dead. Yes, laptops will last quite a while, generally speaking, when you have them in suspend mode, but it's not infinite. And if you do actually run out of battery, it's the same thing as, well, taking the battery out of the computer, it suddenly loses power and that's not healthy. The idea with this feature is that if you do suspend your computer and you don't get back to it fast enough, then it'll go ahead and hibernate it for you. So that way you don't have to worry about actually, you know, losing all of your work, having the hard drive lose power at the wrong time, you know, that could lead to file corruption. I kind of feel like the fact that that's a bullet point in the release notes for Cinnamon is kind of a downside because why is it the case that it's not a common setting that all desktop environments enable by default to the point that it has to be a bullet point in release notes? In my opinion, that should go without saying. People generally don't want their computer to suddenly lose power. Life happens. You get pulled away from your computer. You're not able to get back to it in time. 
And then when you do, the battery is completely drained. You lost everything you're working on. So that's a great feature for me, especially considering I have multiple laptops. But overall, I have to say I'm very impressed with this distribution. I think the speed and responsiveness is pretty much on point. It's easy to use. I mean, we have a menu on the bottom left corner. We have lots of customization options, theming options, really cool utilities like this favorites menu right here, which is also visible in the file browser. And the release notes claim that this isn't really a big release. I kind of agree. I mean, it's not like they've added a ton of brand new features here. I haven't seen this distribution for a while. So even if they didn't include a bunch of new features, I wouldn't have noticed because it's been several versions, I think, before I had a chance to finally get back to Ubuntu Cinnamon Remix. But I think one of the best things about this is that you can have the latest Cinnamon release, which is great. They do a pretty good job of presenting Cinnamon to the user. And of course, there's going to be some challenges that the developers are no doubt facing on account of the fact that it's not an official flavor just yet. But as soon as it becomes an official flavor, I'm thinking that it's going to be more streamlined, and I hope it does. I hope it becomes an official flavor. I'm surprised that it hasn't already happened. So hopefully Canonical will make that happen. Ubuntu Cinnamon is a great distribution. And I had a lot of fun checking out Ubuntu Cinnamon 2104. And I think it's really needed. It really does need to become an official flavor. And I came away from this wondering again, why isn't Ubuntu Cinnamon an official flavor already? Just how rigid are Canonical's requirements for becoming an official flavor in the first place? The developers of Ubuntu Cinnamon have been working at this for a very, very long time now. And I think it's needed. Linux Mint gives you a very, very good cinnamon experience with their cinnamon edition, but they're not an official flavor. Ubuntu Cinnamon wants to become an official flavor. And one of the benefits of Ubuntu Cinnamon is that maybe you don't want to stay on LTS. Linux Mint stays on LTS, and some of you actually prefer to be on the bleeding edge. Now, for me, I don't really mind LTS. That's my preference. But some of you out there, again, you just want to be running the latest and greatest. Ubuntu Cinnamon gives you that capability. And if it becomes an official flavor, then perhaps it's going to give Linux Mint some needed competition. Again, nothing against Linux Mint, but competition is a good thing. Overall, I thought 2104 was a fantastic release. My only issue was with full disk encryption, like I mentioned earlier in the video. It just didn't work for me. And that's strange considering that this laptop in front of me right now, my ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 1, this machine is the very same computer that I use for all of my distribution reviews nowadays, and encryption works for pretty much every distro. So I don't understand why it's not working with Ubuntu Cinnamon. So that's the only hesitation that I have. I would actually like using Ubuntu Cinnamon as my daily driver. It's just without full disk encryption, I can't really do that. Now, it could be the case that if Ubuntu Cinnamon becomes an official flavor, then maybe they'll have access to some tooling that they don't have access to right now that would make things like encryption function as intended. Now, that's just an assumption on my part. I don't know if they are being restricted from any tooling or anything like that. Again, just an assumption. But I have to think that the process becomes a little bit easier when you become an official flavor because I just kind of feel like maybe developing a distribution that's not official is kind of like an uphill battle, so to speak. And I know that they're really working hard on this because I see the attention to detail and the polish. It's just fantastic. Now, I recommend that you check out Ubuntu Cinnamon 2104. You might not even run into the same encryption problem that I ran into on my hardware. Let me know in the comments below if you did not run into an encryption issue on your end. I would be interested to see what the difference might be. But either way, at least check it out. I highly recommend it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And I appreciate you checking out this video. Thanks for watching.